In this video, I will go over um, a, an example of separation of variables in Cartesian coordinates. Now, the, the system that I have here, I have drawn um, only the, the x, y axis. Um, the, the system is three dimensional. I do have a plate, it's a 2D plate on the x, z plane that has a potential of zero. So this is that plane. I do have another one, another plate on uh, the x equals a and z plane. And this plate has also potential of zero. And I have another plate on the y, z plane that has a potential of v naught and it is a function of y. Now, what I want to do is um, find f find the potential. To do that, since I don't have um, any any charges in, in the area where I want to find the potential, I need to solve for the Laplacian uh, Laplace's equation, and that will be the Laplacian of the potential is equal to zero. For separation of variables, uh, this um, I, I I'm using the Cartesian coordinates for this particular problem. And the, the I, I will write the potential as uppercase X, which is a function only of X times uppercase Y because and that one is a function of Y. Now here I'm skipping Z and that is because my solution is an entirely independent of Z. So there is no reason really to include it. This um, writing the potential in this way, uh, transforms, uh, uh, makes the Laplacian of the potential equal zero to give me two ordinary differential equations, second order, d squared x of um, with respect to x is equal to c1 times the function x and something similar for y. Now, one of the things that um, is very, very important for these kind of problems, the boundary conditions. And if you remember from the first uniqueness theorem, the boundary conditions really determine what your solution is. So for, for boundary conditions, we have when y equals zero, the potential is zero. When y equals a, the potential is zero when x is zero the potential is the v naught function of y and also uh, because the the system extends the plates extend to infinity as i go um here i have a potential of zero a potential of zero here it is not zero and we know the, the further away you go from uh, from a plate with a potential, your your potential needs to be approaching zero. If you if you reach infinity, your potential needs to be zero. So as x approaches infinity, I know that the potential will need to be approaching zero. Now, okay, th this is the part that um, is new. And this is this is the part of the problem where the more problems you do, um, the the more familiar you will be with uh, whether to make c one the constant c one and c two positive or negative, and what the solutions will look like. First, I want to mention something. The two the two possibilities, depending on whether c one and c two are positive and negative, you will get two solutions. Two solutions are possible. And the other one is an exponential.
Now, I will discuss, I'll spend a few minutes talking about the properties of these two. And I will discuss them with relation to, to my system here. A, uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna draw the graph. The a sinusoidal function will look like this, okay? Whether it's the sine or the cosine, it will look like this. When, when though we talk about exponentials, we are expecting a behavior more or less that looks like this. Now here are some important features of these two. A, a sinusoidal function like the sine or the cosine will take the value of zero at um, in, in periodic ways, in a periodic function. And this is important when you want your solution to your potential will need to take the value of zero. For example, here, I want the potential to be zero, I want it to be zero here. Now, on the other hand, the an exponential and the function of an exponential will not cross zero. It will approach zero as you go to infinity, but it will not cross zero multiple times. On the other hand, you can make an exponential to approach zero. And there are times where you want your potential to approach zero as you go to infinity. For example, as I said here, one of the boundary conditions is here. I want my potential to go to infinity as x approaches zero. Now, this, okay, this, these properties of the two kinds of solutions of these ordinary differential equations will show you whether you need to make your constant positive or negative. Okay, and for um, in order to have a sinusoidal solution, you will need to have a negative constant. In order to have exponentials, you need to make your um, your constant positive. So now looking at how the pot how I want the potential to behave as a function of y, as a function of y, I, I need to make the potential zero at these two points. And the only way to do that is if I have a sinusoidal function, so I need to use a negative constant here, minus k squared y. Now for x, I want the potential to approach zero as x goes to infinity, and the only way to do that is using exponentials as solutions. So this will be k squared times x, and this means the solution is going to be x as a function of x a to the e kx plus b to the e minus kx and for y as a function of y will need to be c times the sine of ky plus d times the cosine of ky. Now, now that I have the two um, uh, solutions for x and y, I need to go back and I need to start imposing these four boundary conditions to the solutions that I just wrote. The easiest one to impose is this one. As x goes to infinity, the potential needs to approach zero. Now, here is my function. As x goes to infinity, e to the kx does not approach zero. As x goes to infinity, e to the kx will, will blow up. It will itself approach infinity. There is no way I can, I can keep this term. And this means from the boundary condition that I imposed, a needs to be zero. So that means this term goes to, the entire thing goes to zero. Now, the next, the, the other boundary condition that is the easiest to implement also is this one, y equals zero, the potential needs to be zero. Let's take a look. When I have zero for y, the sign of zero will give me zero. So this term goes away. When y is one, I have, um, when, when y is 0, the cosine of 0 will give me 1. 
So the potential will be D, and since I, I need the potential to be zero, that means my constant D is zero, which make which makes this term to be um, to, to be zero. Now the there are two terms. One term survived from x. One term survived from y. Writing both of them is essentially a constant. Okay, I'm gonna call it constant b e to the minus kx times the sine of ky. And the next boundary condition that I will choose to implement to impose on the solution is this one. At y equals a, the potential needs to be zero. Now here it is. At y equals a, what I will have is b e to the minus kx sine of ky, and I need this to be zero. I cannot set the constant b to be zero because if I do that, I get a solution for the potential zero everywhere. That's not what I'm looking for. And I need to make the sign. So when y equals a, I will have the sign of ka needs to be zero. And the sinusoidal function is zero when the argument inside the function is equal to n times pi. Okay, ka, the sine, um, will be zero when ka is pi and two pi and three pi and so on. And this means, this will give me, this boundary condition actually gives me what k is, n times pi over a. And now I will use this to write my solution I'm gonna do it here so it will be b times e to minus n pi x over a times the sine of n pi y over a. Now one thing to keep in mind, this is a solution that satisfies um, well the, the three out of the four boundary conditions, but the thing is the, the quantity k that satisfies the boundary condition, I, I have I have an infinite number of k's that satisfy this boundary condition because n can take an infinite number of values. n can be 1 and 2 and 3 all the way to infinity and this gives me an infinite number of k values. Now I will use this property to construct the general, not the specific, the general solution to to my uh, to Laplace to Laplace's equation, and the way to do that I will use b times e to minus n p pi x over a sine of n pi y over a. And because n can take an infinite number of values, the general solution will be will be an infinite sum when n equals one to infinity. Now, I have not yet imposed the last boundary condition, which is when x equals zero, v equals v naught, as a function of y, and I will do that now. So when x equals zero. I have v0 as a function of y. This needs to be v0 y. And this is the sum n equals 1 all the way to infinity. When x equals 0, this gives me 1.
Um, by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention, um, the, the constant B will be different um, for each specific solution that depends on N. So B really is a constant that depends on which term we have from this infinite sum. And so this V not Y, this is the last boundary condition, V not Y needs to be equal to the infinite sum of BN times the sine of NPY over A. Now, since th this is a boundary condition that the last one that needs to be satisfied from this boundary condition, I will get some information and the information that I get from this boundary condition are the coefficients B sub N. I have determined everything else that I need the exponential of minus N pi X over A, the sine and pi y over a. I have already determined this. The last thing that I have yet to determine is the coefficients b sub n. And this is what this boundary condition does. I can use Fourier, Fourier's trick here and this will give me, okay, essentially I'm solving this but for b sub n for these coefficients, the coefficients will be 2 over a the integral from 0 to a, this is a, the function v naught y times the sine npy over a d, dy, the integral is over dy. So now with this I have obtained the solution to the problem. It is this this is the potential, it is an infinite sum and the coefficients b sub n are determined with this expression. This is the solution to to the problem I just described. Now, this is how you will do it. Once you have, okay, once you're given a, a function v not y, what you will do, you will plug it into here, you will find, um, you will find an expression, you're gonna plug it into the integral, hopefully you can do the integral and then get an expression for the coefficient b sub n and then you place that coefficient, whatever expression you have here, in your infinite sum. Now, this is an infinite sum, okay, and in practice you cannot really do an infinite sum. So, what, what you do um, in, in, in practice, you will keep a finite number of terms, of course. You won't calculate infinite terms. You will keep as many as you need that will give you... Um, that will bring you as close as possible to to the solution that uh, that you need.